Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you the basics of how Java threading works. Java threading allows two different objects to operate simultaneously. Well, actually what they're doing is they're taking turns performing an action, but it appears to us as if it's happening simultaneously. Okay, so there's a couple ways that we can uh, implement threading. The preferred method is to create a class that implements the runnable interface. And I'm just going to show you a quick example here. Let's just do a Java desktop application and we'll just call this thread test. And now I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to create a rabbit class. We're going to make our rabbit be runnable which means we can have rabbits do some things at the same time. Okay, so right in here I can say implements runnable belongs to the java.ling package. So right in here I can say implement methods and you'll see that there's this method called run that belongs to the runnable interface and this is where the uh, multi-threaded work actually gets done. Okay, so let me create a private string name attribute and I'm also going to create a constructor for this like this and I'll also just put a print statement in here that just says rabbit constructed and I'll even print out the name of the rabbit. Okay, so I'm going to have a default constructor in here as well. Like this. So there's my constructor. Here's my run method and inside of my run method what I'd like to do is just have a loop, maybe a loop through 20 times and uh, print something out that says, you know, our rabbit is hopping, something simple like that. And then also put a little pause in there. We implement that uh, by doing a sleep method. So inside here I'm going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than 20, i++. plus plus, And I'll have a print statement. And then if I say thread.sleep, it's expecting some kind of number in milliseconds. It's expecting a long data type here. And uh, let's go ahead and add uh, surround with a try catch. Okay, so that was a checked exception. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Okay, so now let's create a thread test class. And I'm just going to place the main method in here. And what I'd like to do is instantiate a few rabbits. Rabbit R1 equals new rabbit. Let me have an R2. Okay, let's make sure all of this is working so far. We haven't actually tested the multi-threading behavior of this yet, but we can see that these are getting constructed. Now, what I'd like to do is, um, first of all, just do an r1.run, directly call the run method. And I want to show you what happens when we do that. You'll see that when I run this, my generic rabbit goes through all the looping first and then it goes on to the next rabbit and so on. Okay, so they're not operating all at the same time. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do is make this really a multi-threaded application. So let me terminate this and um, 
to make this truly you know, multi-threaded, what we do is we construct thread objects. So thread t1 equals new thread, and we pass into the constructor the object that implements runnable. So here I have r1, and let me manage this right here. like that. So to kick this off, instead of directly calling the run method, I now take my thread object and I call the start method. t1.start, t2.start, and t3.start. And that start method implicitly kicks off the run method, and since it is multi-threaded, they will kind of take turns doing their thing. So you'll see here that when I run this now, see what's happening? they're all getting a little slice of time. I want to emphasize that, that implementing runnable is not the only way you can perform multi-threading. Uh, another way is we could have said public class rabbit extends thread. So we can have it be a subclass of thread. Um, but, uh, but that's not really the preferred method because as you probably already know, Java does not support multiple inheritance. So by making this implement an interface, it allows this class to extend some other class if, if we need it to. Well, I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.